On the bench today is a Luxman M02 in here for for servicing. But the person just bought it and he's thinking that there's not much going on with it. Everything seems to be working fine. All right, we're part of this one. Through my dim bulb, I see nothing out of the ordinary. Okay, so I'll shut this off for now. And uh, I'm going to open this one up. I think I need to charge my screwdriver. Yeah. I've already lost a screw. There we go. And here's the list. Clean the inside pods. Anything that might stand up. He wants me to check the DC voltage, do a bias adjustment, and the meter adjustment. He wants me to see they're synchronized. Look at this. This is dirty. Okay. It's got a lot of dust in here. That's pretty dusty. So I'll be putting some gloves on and this is going to go into the garage. We'll need to dust that off. <laughs> yeah. But it is just surface dust so doesn't look like anything was dropped on here. There's no liquid. Check out these fins. The cooling system of these Luxman were different a little bit. A couple of capacitors on these. They're yellow. They're orange. So, and of course, we're going to take the, the bottom part of, of it off. So, uh, I'm going to take this in the garage. We'll dust it off. And uh, we'll come back with it. Okay? Okay, it's all dusted out. Looks really better. There are some dark spots on this circuit board. Right, right here, it's pretty dark. Eh? Yeah, it's, uh, that was heat related. These are my outputs here. Check out this transformer. You know you get power when you have a transformer this size. It's huge. I'm gonna take the bottom plate out. Amazing. Luxman made quality stuff. Look at the size of these filter capacitors, they're huge. 
I bet you they're still holding on the charge too. This has been unplugged for a while. Let's see how much power we got on this. I'm gonna power this on. There we go. Seventy volts. <laughs> this is powerful. Seventy point two. It's pretty damn accurate, isn't it? All right, power this off. Uh, unplug this. And since I want to get in here and check some components, I'm going to check my voltage. My voltage is going down, but if I'm if I don't want to wait, I can use my voltage eliminator. I call it. All I have to do is touch. There it is. It's down to four, three, two, one volts. Let's try this one. Thirty-three volts, and this is hooked up to the chassis. Get rid of the voltage. Here it is three volts, two volts, one volt. There you go. All done. So I have no more voltage here, right? Try it. One volt. One volt. Okay. I'm going to check some of these capacitors to start off with. I don't suspect anything wrong with them. I'm pretty sure that they're going to be okay. It's like the day they were put in. Four caps, and we'll try. I don't know if you guys can see this, sir. This cap is good. It's at zero. It's almost as if I'm touching these. There's zero leakage on those capacitors. I did see some orange ones. No, they're not orange, they're red. So I don't suspect there are any, there's anything wrong with those, but check them in. They're right about here. the capacitors go I know I, I'm not suspecting any there's a couple of small ones here that I will check yeah no this is where I'm wasting my time checking those because there's absolutely nothing wrong with them okay so we've checked it all over we've dusted off so far Capacitors are at 100%. Now, I need to know my voltage. If you guys notice the, these are the output transistors here. I try to clean in between here. said they put on, you know, 30 years ago. Here was the was pretty bad as well. So I just you know just try to clean that out a little bit. Okay. 
go down to the adjustments. There's my adjustment. We'll do the bias first. How's that? DC voltage across the emitter resistor. Let's try to find the emitter resistor. There are my emitter resistor right here. Four per each channel. Okay. It wants 4.5 and it's really hard to believe, but okay, why don't I just leave it at 5? So the left channel would be, according to the schematic, should be well set. Now, I take this out of there. And I move on to the right channel. And to the right channel, they want 143B. This is 143B right here. This is the one. So I'm measuring on 143B, zero millivolts. And it doesn't matter if I tried this trimmer pod here. Absolutely nothing happened. So I'm wondering if I don't have any an issue with the circuitry around uh, the bias circuitry. So it's something that I'm going to have to dig into. Let's see. Okay, I'm back on with the Luxman. Uh, I'm trying to figure out why the right side here is having an, I'm having an issue setting the bias. Uh, my probes are I properly set to R, the resistor emitter R143B, and that's where it's set. But I'm reading zero millivolts on this. But I just want you guys to watch this. If I touch this, right there, touching it. When I'm touching this, I'm reading something different. So there is an issue right around here, and there's a lot of issues on this side as well. See, right now it's back down to zero. Zero millivolts, if I touch this, my multimeter is reading. So I have an issue, and I believe it's probably a cold solder that's on this board. And I'm not so sure if the left channel it doesn't have the same thing as this side here. Okay, I'll zoom you guys in on this. Check this one. This is, this is completely detached from the circuit board. You see that this this is completely detached from the circuit board. This one is I'm done retouching. 
these two left and right board. So it's hooked up on the right channel right now and I do, I am reading at 36 so this needs to go down and I can actually hear this humming. So it is too high. But uh, I'll need a screwdriver for this. Try this one. Let's bring this down actually hear the humming going away now remember they want 4.5 millivolts so I'm gonna give them 4.5 let's go to 5 quite happy with 5 4.9 now this has just been turned on as well so we'll need to let it sit for a little bit the issue so it's pretty steady at 4.9 eh? I like that should we check the left channel let's try the left channel so the left channel was way off so we're gonna bring this up to 4.95 and we're gonna leave it like that <clears throat> there so the whole issue that I was having with the for setting the bias on the right side was cold soldering on these boards and I had I had at least 10 of them three of them they were completely detached you know so I'll try to take this one back a little bit I just want to make sure that the warm-up period is done and then the bias is set to five and after this we're gonna do the DC voltage see if I have any pretty confident that I should be okay on that section hopefully and I think the very last that he wants me to do is we'll check the sound uh, We'll see how many watts that we're getting in. So left channel, 5.1, 5.2. We're okay with that. My big issue is the right channel. <laughs> Let's try this one. Uh, make sure that this is bang on. And then we can actually move on from this. And there it is, 5.6. one five point two this is set properly I'm pretty happy with that and guys all it was is coal solder the soldering on this board looking bad some of them were detached like I said earlier there was three or four of them that was actually detached from the circuit board it was still working but if I didn't try to set the bias, I would have never caught on to this because he was saying and this was working perfectly when he tested it out. And when you start digging into these old receivers, you'll find that most of your issues are are not parts. The parts on this is flawless. This is working perfectly. But the soldering, and you can tell when you're looking at when you're looking through the scope, you can tell that soldering is really old the right thing to do would be to solder the whole board but you guys you know you can't do that it's just it's just time consuming and so we just hope for the best we fix what needs to be fixed you'll notice before when I used to touch this I used to lose you know and that was due to the soldering 100% soldering now it's now it's really good okay I just wanted to, to show you guys that as I was touching this before this was just going back and forth in the mid and on my multimeter but now after I've retouched all the soldering 
That looks great. The bias is set to 5. I'm moving on to the DC. I'm going to check if I have any DC voltage on this. Okay, so I'll have to change my probes. Put this on DC. Let's check my DC voltage. Oh, well, the left channel is is pretty good. Three two millivolts in DC. That's pretty good. Let's check the right channel. Our right channel is at two point four. That's pretty. That's acceptable as well. So we'll be doing okay with that. That was millivolts, by the way. Okay, so I'm going to hook up my speakers to this and let her rip. Thanks to power us forward. Find the F-150 for your crew. Get this great offer on select F-150s today. We're at the sound test. Get some music on there. Both channels are absolutely phenomenal and then this is a Luxman so you know this is going to sound like we've got both left and right channel. Just wanted to show you guys how smooth this is working. There's the left channel, here's going to be the right, then right. The meters are pretty near synchronized together. I'm uh, pushing 5.2 and 5.1 on this one. This one is just a little tab higher and yeah, these are both synchronized now. All right so I'm happy with that. Mm. Okay guys, I got a frequency of a thousand hertz and it's on an 8 ohm load. I've got the preamp and the amps hooked up together and this is what I'm getting. Getting equal on both channels. Getting distortion at 4.76. Kicking this back. I am clear to sail at 3.44. So 3.44 times 10 would be 34.4 RMS. Yeah, I'm, ha I'm having distortion there. So I need to kick this back. There, I'm starting there. So 3.4. 3.44 okay <clears throat> I've done everything that I was supposed to be doing as far as we've resoldered the, the circuit board that was giving us some issues we've set the bias we were able to set the bias afterwards at 5 millivolts per channel I've checked the DC voltage and that is correct after setting the bias accordingly I'm down to 69.4 both channels and I believe they were asking for 68 so it's it's running a lot smoother it's not gonna be as warm it's gonna be it's gonna be nice your receiver or your amplifier works so much better it's some sort of like a little tune-up now he wants me to check number four here the UV meter adjustment. He wants me to see if they're actually synchronized with the wattage that you're supposed to get. Thousand, making sure the volume is up there. Okay, I've got this hooked up to my scope as well, and I've got my multimeter hookup. It's hooked up to my speaker terminal, and I'm going to do the left channel first. This is AC voltage, and I'm going to start cranking this up. 
as I crank it up, you guys can see this. I'm up to 29 volts there, right? That's pretty powerful. This thing is pushing 150 watts. So they want me to bring this up to 34.64 voltage, okay? Thirty-four point five. Bring this down, and then my lighting is really not that great on this. But this should be set to zero decibel or a hundred and fifty watts. That's what I'm getting, so we'll need to adjust this, and we're doing the right, the left channel. So I've set this to zero. It wasn't quite at zero, but now it's at 150. Okay, so this is set properly. So now... Oop. Now they want me to bring the frequency the frequency down by 30 decibel. So we're going to do that. Thirty it should be one point four. And I'm just about there. Okay, so they're both set to 150. That's pretty bang on. Okay, so we're gonna kick that back. together it's ready to go back to its customer I'm going to call them up should be able to pick this up today hope you enjoy the video a thumbs up send me some comments and subscribe to my channel I would really appreciate it